Hey, not all the jobs we do are white beach and white sand. Sometimes we get in the upper end of these bayous and it is nothing but stinky mud. Fortunately, on the front of this wall here, I guess they'd done some renovations to their house and they'd taken all the leftover debris and thought it was a good idea to throw it in front of the old seawall. So there was bricks, concrete, mortar. It's all piled up in front of the uh, seawall right there. So I had to move all that stuff out of the way just so we could vibrate this new vinyl seawall down. Now this isn't a naval style wall like you've seen in a lot of my videos. This is a freestanding vinyl seawall, which is good up to five to six feet. They say a little bit more, but I'm good at five or six feet. I'll leave it right there. Y'all check this out. Let me know what you think. Thanks. Y'all make sure you watch all the video too, because you can't always tie back a seawall with the typical tie back dead men piling system with rods. Sometimes there are things in a way, like a swimming pool. So we went with the manta ray earth anchors on this here and drove them down underneath the swimming pool and then we locked and loaded them for proper tie back. We're starting with the project that I had built back in the 80s with my dad's company. We're going to remove this, haul it to the reclamation center, and then get started on this project. This is what we got to deal with this morning, get all these elephant ears all the way, pulled back with all the concrete and debris that's underneath of it. You can see a lot of it right here already that I started pulling back yesterday to kind of get an idea of what I had. I just I must have did some remodeling or something that's dumped all the bricks over top of this retainer wall. All right, guys, we got us a clean slate here now. Got the boathouse removed, the dock removed, and getting ready to get started on this vinyl seawall. Once I start pulling back some of the vegetation, it looks like some of the previous owners or contractor has dumped trash over the wall. I have got loads of concrete and brick debris all piled up in excess of three foot thick. So I've got to pull some of that stuff out of the way. That's some of the hidden secrets that you find when you start doing uh, seawall repairs or installing new seawalls. You got to kind of take in consideration. Um, had no idea that it was there because it was all covered with vegetation. I've actually pulled out tires, pieces of cars, washing machines, dryers. It seems like wherever there is a hole, Somebody's gonna shove something in it just to fill it up. Here's a little fast action work of getting this project done. These are 14 foot vinyl sheet pilings. We're vibrating them down. I've actually run into a lot of debris, the bricks of course, and roots down there, about two foot from final uh, spot where we wanted to grade them to. But uh, we got them all in with the exception of just a little bit where the top of the sheet started busting off. So we cut them off to keep them all looking nice and clean. foot of seawall, 14 foot sheets installed. Yeah, it's nothing but muddy. Now we're getting ready to start installing our manta ray earth anchors. We've got a pool right here on the back side, so we're not able to put the traditional dead men pilings in. So the manta ray earth anchor is it's like a big toggle bolt. It's kind of shaped as a manta ray fish. We'll drive that in 12 to 16 foot back behind the wall, and then I'll pull on it to uh, load the anchor spread it out and give it some holding power. You good there, Todd? Uh, yeah. Right there. Oh, that's pretty steep. <laughs> Alright, you want to hop back off?
stick the uh, threaded rod through the hole in the uh, seawall, and then on the back side we'll thread on a manta ray uh, anchor to the end of the rod. So this is the manta ray earth anchor here I was talking about, and you can see right here we got the threaded in where the threaded rod goes into. This point here is where the push rod goes in, and you drive it into the ground like that, and you see we've got a push rod installed on this one right now, and that one there is 12 foot back in the ground right now. That's a 12 foot threaded rod, you can see the rod is there, we'll pull that rod out, then we'll hook an eye nut to the end of this, and yank on that rod and load that manta ray anchor. By loading, when you pull on it, it stands this up drags it to the ground like that. nylon strap around the uh, driving rod now and we're going to hook the chain to that and I'll be removing that from the ground. We usually pull it out but this is really muddy up here so I'm sure there's a real good suction on it. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, it's got to be wrapped right or it won't come out either. <laughs> hey, guy on. If it keeps sliding you just put that coupling on the end. Grab that coupling. I was going to buy lunch if we got all these drove before lunch. I don't think we're going to do it. Oh, that's right, you're not feeling good. <laughs> there we go. That's how you do it, Todd. We have a hydraulic uh, puller that actually pulls on it and gives you a uh, a, a measurement of, of pulling capacity. But I'm pretty familiar with, with this tractor here and what I can pull on it too. I'll know when I get it pulled to its fullest extent. What we do is put an eye nut on there, hook it up to the tractor, and I just pull it until I don't pull no more. And that's good enough to hold this wall. down there. Put a little vibrator on too and start getting that thing right back out of the ground. Tilt it up. One more. One more. One more. All right, start going down. Nut.
really means a lot to me. Y'all watching my videos and comment and give me the likes on it. If you haven't done so yet, please like and share. And if you got any comments or questions, please feel free. Well, that's hard to say. Please feel free to leave me a comment or question. Thanks. Hey guys, we're making another push over to the boat ramp to load up on some more material. We got a little bit of material on here that we used for the project that was excess. We're going to go ahead and get that unloaded. Get some more pilings loaded up, some boathouse pilings loaded up, and some building materials. Set sail. Some of the things you see at the boat ramp when we're unloading stuff. We asked what time era they're representing, and they said they're early 1800s. Also asked them where the air conditioner was, and they said it's friendly clouds. <laughs> <laughs> we missed a guy blowing a horn, shoving off. Hey, we protect that as well, boys. <laughs> Y'all don't sing or nothing? Come on! Stay in sync? <laughs> Cat Morgan. Cat Morgan. <laughs> Y'all have fun. Just left the boat ramp, got all of our 2 by 8 by 20s loaded up, all 30 6 inch by 20 foot long pilings. We'll get these laid out on the barge tomorrow and install the piling wrap on it and start vibrating these poles down the ground. Now we've got to trip back across the bay and get tied up at the job site, knock off and be back in the morning. We've got a lot going on out here today. We set poles on the front of the seawall for the boardwalk. Got dirt being hauled in. I'm having to haul in white masonry sand because the city golf breeze only accepts a certain color of sand to be installed, even though we got black muck over here. I've got to go back with the white sand, so we're spending about double the cost for sand installing white masonry sand. And we got a little tight area right there that we can't fit the uh, skid steer through, so we're using a dingo to install it there. Also getting the irrigation installed. There was about six different lines he had drain lines and pool lines run through the wall so we got all those pumped through the wall also 